Ryder Hall of Famer Jeff Fairholm joining us. Look at this. Looks like he's ready to take off in the uh, Millennium Falcon. How you doing, Fairway? I'm good, Rod. How are you doing? Good. Sounding great. And for those that don't know, Fairway, Jeff Fairholm is my favorite all-time Saskatchewan Rough Rider. And Jeff, I got to say, you, you are my eyes and ears for the Riders game in Edmonton last Saturday, 27-24, because I missed it. I was following your Twitter feed. You, <laughs> you didn't seem that impressed as the game went along. No, I was impressed. I just, uh, just the first half, they just seemed very flat and they just weren't playing well. And, you know, I'm a little concerned about the defensive line. I don't think uh, Hughes has had a sack or even been involved in the last three games or four games. So I'm a little concerned about that. But overall, it was a great team win. And they came back in the second half and showed what kind of champions they, they, they may be. Are you sold on them as contenders i mean you've seen you watch every game you were here for the 30-year reunion of the 89 great cup you've seen them up close do they have what it takes to win it all i think they do i think they're a solid team you know it's this league you know there's only a couple of teams actually it's better this year uh with parity as, as far as parity is concerned um you know coming down to the last game of the season um you know they have a, a you know they, they have a great chance to be in first place. So why wouldn't they be contenders? I think they I think they're right there. They have all the tools, and as long as Fajardo stays healthy, I think we're good. Jeff, it's Darren Dupont. Uh, thanks for coming on. What is it about this team, and what is it about this fan base? Because you just said a little uninspired, maybe in the opening half. Um, we're happy that we're in first place, but we don't seem to be happy about the process or the way we're doing it. We're not uh, inspiring a lot of confidence among the fans that we're winning dominantly enough. What is it about uh, the fans? Are we just not that comfortable? <laughs> Maybe uh, I'm not sure. I'm not in Regina, so I don't. You know, I'm pretty happy with the way they're playing. I I, I can't remember the last time they were in first place. My memory is not that great anymore. But oh nine, um, oh nine. Okay, so it's been a while. Uh, maybe fans are getting too complacent. Complacent. I don't know, but I. I think they're playing great. Uh, they have as good a shot as anybody. And you don't want to be blowing people out uh, at the end of the year because, you know, you end up going into uh, the playoffs sort of, a, you know, you know, sort of, a, I don't know what's the word, uh, more cocky than you need to be. Um, I think, you know, having close games at this time of year is good for that. Um, you know, back, you know, going back, whatever, 30 years, 35 years, it's to 89. You know, we, we got blown out by by uh, Edmonton in our final game and, you know, we peaked at the right time. So I think it's good to have, I think it's good to have meaningful games at the end and have close games. And I think it's just preparing them for the future. Jeff Marshall Hamilton here. Your your reference back to '89 sort of tweaked that where I was going to go with my question. Most teams that that win the Grey Cup have some adversity throughout the year that they learn from and grow from. And this team, other than losing Fajardo on the third play of the game, which is essentially, you know, that's almost like last year. I I can't point to any adversity that they've faced, and I'm just wondering, do you as a championship team need to face that adversity? And and if yes. Um, what are your thoughts on whether they have learned those lessons yet at this, you know, the seventh, eighteenth game of the season? I think adversity comes in many forms, and losing um, uh, your quarterback in the third, you know, the first series of the of the, of the season, uh, I think is is that is is some serious adversity. I think that every single player goes through many kinds of adversity throughout an 18 game season. So, you know, it may not be evident to everybody watching the games that there's adversity, but I guarantee you that over, you know, a long stretch of time and certainly over 18 games, there is adversity that they're all dealing with, uh, you know, injuries being one, but, you know, you don't know what's going on inside the locker room or what the coaches are saying and what's shown on the film. So there is adversity. And to, to answer your question, yes, I think you do need the adversity. I mean, if you're, if it's a cakewalk and you, you know, you get that, that, that self-assurance, which isn't good come the playoff time. And, you know, the one thing that, that happens in the playoffs that uh, doesn't happen in the regular season is the speed of the game uh, increases dramatically. So it's going to be interesting to see how some of the younger players um, adjust to that. And I think that, you know, the, that the game against Edmonton, I think, was some adversity. They came back after that, you know, lackluster first half and, and showed that they can turn it around. So, you know, I'm not... They're going to have to. Uh, they're going to have to start start all of the games strong, and uh, you know, don't take this next one for granted. I think they need to go in on a winning streak and get that first place. One one last question: What are your thoughts on the buy? If you're a player, do you want that buy and play in the Western Final, or do you want to play in the semi? 
you're beat up by the time you've played 18 games. And, you know, I think the buy is great to have, um, you know, fix your body up a little bit and, and get prepared and allows the coaches an extra week to prepare. So, you know, you've, they've got a great coaching staff and you give them an extra week to prepare for whoever they might play in the Western final. Uh, I think it's, I think it's huge. There's a lot of people that say that, you know, you're, you're, you're short, but you know, uh, what happens during the year is they all get a buy throughout the year. I don't know what their record is off buys, but Undefeated. Uh, I think they need it. <laughs> well, there you go. So I yeah. proved my point. So uh, I think it's, I think it's important to, uh, to get your bodies right. Uh, I think we all get a lot of questions for you, Jeff, but, uh, and on the adversity thing, I'm with you, Marshall. It doesn't appear like they've had a lot, but I guarantee you, Day and Dickinson will manufacture somewhere. They, they, they're, there's some that we haven't seen, right? The other thing, Jeff, is you're in Calgary. I mentioned is the site of the uh, 2019 Grey Cup. What's the buzz, if any, on the game, and what's the take on the stamps as they roll and obviously don't want to give up their locker room for the big game? Uh, there's a lot of buzz. Uh, I think Everyone in Calgary is really excited about it. It's a it's a bigger city than Regina, but it's also a CFL city. So, uh, with the Flames sort of playing for 500, um, I think it helps. It helps the CFL. But um, Calgary is a small enough city that they get behind the CFL, and uh, there's there's quite a bit of buzz. I think everyone's looking forward to it. I won't be there, unfortunately. I'm going to be on vacation, but uh, um, it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be a great show. And Calgary always puts on a great show, whether it's in Calgary or not. So uh, the horses will be running wild. Do you want to make a prediction this morning on who might be in the game, Jeff? We won't hold you to it. Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to. It's it's tough. I think Hamilton's going to get there from the east. Um, I think that they're going to beat Montreal in the in the final in the western or eastern final. Um, and then you know, it's, I think whoever gets first place in the west, I think is going to be in the in in the Grey Cup. And then. Uh, uh, so let's say it's Saskatchewan against Hamilton. I'd love to see that. And, uh, you know, I think Saskatchewan has every chance every chance to win it. A rematch of 89 and 2013, that is what you're and, saying. And two second-string quarterbacks. And two second-string quarterbacks, sure, sure. Uh, and by the way, we had Poli in here last week. A lot of the 89 guys we have had on the program, Narco, last week. Um, how was hey, the how's 30? how's Narco doing? He really, really well. As a matter, like yeah, good, really good. well, and we're going to awesome. Houston in a couple of weeks on a sports trip. We're doing this show from Houston, and Narco's going to come on with us. So, thanks for asking, and he is doing great. Um, That's good. How he didn't make it back for the reunion, but you did. Uh, how was it there last? Like, wasn't last month? I guess August. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We uh, there weren't as many guys as we had hoped. I think we had sixteen plus. Uh, Plus some some staff, you know, great. It's great to see the the whole, you know, a lot of the guys uh, together and 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 girls. I mean, Jill Jill McDougall was there, of course. Um, so it's always fun to get together. You know, what's funny? What I found about that was. Um, we didn't talk about anything during any of the games. All we talked about were the antics off the field. And that's what we all laugh about. And of course, po Poli's, I think, one of the best storytellers in the world. So, uh, you know, we had we had a ball. We had uh, some great dinners. Uh, got a chance to uh, reintroduce ourselves to to family and, uh, and friends and uh, play some golf and watch a great game. So everything was fun. We had a great, great, great time. Our producer Clark has one last one for you. He says, "Who's the who was the best athlete?" No, he wants to know who's the best athlete now. Is that you want to know, Clark, of the '89 team? It it's got to be you, Jeff. Who is the most athletic today of that team? Suter would say uh, him. Brescietti was pretty good. Bresh is unbelievable. We had an alumni it. game on Labor Day weekend, and he won it by himself. Every one of them is going to say me. <laughs> they're all going to say they're them. All, they're all going to say themselves. <laughs> Speaking wow. of, look at, look no, no, at no, I'm not going to say that. You know okay. who? You know who actually was in the best shape of anybody? It was actually Mark Arness. Um, wow, he looked fantastic. Uh, I haven't seen him in years, and uh, he's doing super well in business. And his body looks fantastic. He's uh, mountain biking all the time, and uh, you know he's. Uh, I think he was probably in the best shape of anybody. Well, he's probably got the best life. Doesn't he own 800 Verizon stores and he lives in Phoenix? I mean, not a bad life, well, right? I, yeah, I think he has a house in, in Scottsdale or something. But, uh, yeah, he's got like 800 Verizon stores. So I'm so proud that, you know, it's great to see how everyone's turned out. And, uh, you know, football is such a small part of our lives that, uh, you know, I played for nine years and, you know, I'm 50, almost 54 now. So, you know, it's a small part of our lives, and it's always good to see how everyone's turned out and uh, everyone's successful, and it's great to see. 
Uh, well, you for sure included in that group. And Jeff, they always say, don't meet your heroes, but uh, you'll be disappointed. You never did. So thanks for all you do for us. <laughs> and uh, let's keep in touch, my man. I appreciate the time. You bet. Anytime, Rod. Always have time for you guys. Thank you. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.